Next up at UFC Vegas 39, we have Sabina Mazo versus Maria Agapova. Maria Agapova, nine and two overall, three and two in her last five, sandwiched between wins uh, or losses. Uh, Sabina Mazo, nine and two overall, also three wins sandwiched between two losses. Uh, and this is a super interesting matchup because it should be a fun fight. We just have two kickboxers. Maria Agapova comes forward, high volume, high pressure, throws caution to the wind at times. And once she settles in and stops chasing a first round knockout, she's got solid boxing with clean combinations and has some actual power. Sabina Mazzo, great kicks. She's like a lady crow cop. She just gets that up top. Nice, nice power. Uh, she does not have power in her hands though, only her feet. Um, both are primary strikers, but very different styles. I see Sabina winning if she can keep this at distance with her range and Agapova winning if she can get inside kicking range and use her boxing to make it dirty. It's it's so interesting because similar records, similar like on paper style, kickboxer versus kickboxer, but very, very different styles of kickboxing. If you dig into the stats, you'll see that both of them have gotten takedowns in the UFC. Agapova averages more than one takedown per fight. Uh, I just don't think there's going to be a lot of grappling here because Sabina wants to keep that distance, right? She's going to use the range, try to keep Agapova at distance. And if Agapova gets inside the pocket, she's going to throw big, heavy hands and not really look for a takedown. Uh, the most meaningful stat, though, is that Agapova gets hit almost 25% more than she lands. I see Sabina uh, surviving sort of the early throw caution to the wind, look for the, lot the knockout. And then uh, just using range, touching Agapova up, and riding out a solid decision. So I've got Mazo winning a decision on the outside. What do you think? Listen, I am very, very jealous of Maria Agapova because she went three rounds with Tracy Cortez. And you know I would love to go three rounds with Tracy Cortez. So I'm, and, and that match, I'm, I'm very jealous for in that fact. The biggest difference I see here is Agapova – being at ATT. These are both very, very young fighters. They're both very raw. Agapo was, you know, I think the wilder striker, she's not quite as, you know, tight in her striking as, as Mazo, but being at ATT, you've heard Dan mention a million times. These young people, the young fighters improve so, so fast. And ATT, as we know, is one of the best camps that you can be at. I think she's learning. I think she's learning fast. I think she's tightening everything up and she's going to come in with a game plan. She actually might come in with a game plan of, of grappling because Mazo can get out grappled like crazy. Um, so she might, you know, change it up. ATT, they come in with game plans, get some takedowns, win the fight that way. Um, I don't see a finish on either side because they don't have those that straight line power. Um, but I like Agapova in this matchup just because of the ATT, honestly. Uh, and you're not, I mean, listen, that's solid insight. You're not wrong. I mean, if somebody wants to implement a grappling game plan, and that's why I walk through the grappling stats because – Neither one of them had any really meaningful amount, but Maria Agapova averages more than one takedown. And, it, you know, the stats are like literally one point, whatever, takedown per fight. So she does get a takedown. She does look to get it there. Um, you know, so you're right. If, if one of them wants to lean into a grappling heavy game plan, that will absolutely throw the other person off, change up the whole thing. My only concern is... You know, uh, in order to implement a grappling game plan, Maria would have to get inside of the range of Sabino, which is uh, Sabina, which is not easy to do. And once she gets in there, is she really going to shoot a takedown or land bombs because she's in the pocket and she gets wild and looks for finishes? And if she's that close, she's going to go the safe route or look for the finish. So I like Sabina's just range and uh, her ability to control that. High volume, I don't know, 108 high volume. This might be a less for Sabina, a more for Maria fight, um, which had some success with the split last time. So if you like Maria, you like her at $7,900 or $7, also? Uh, you know, I like that that number, I guess, but that's just depend on if she does grapple. If she doesn't grapple, it's going to be a sloppy mess of a fight where she might win, she might lose. And at $8,000, you'd like to see a better better chance at winning than that. Um, so if I knew for sure that she's coming and coming and grapple, absolutely. I do like her at the plus 130. And I agree 100%. I think it's less more on the monkey knife fight. 
Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have a bet on this one. Um, so I will probably grab. I would the, probably uh, play the... uh, underdog uh, parlay with her, her and someone else, maybe, maybe her and uh, Rosa. Honestly, just kind of an underdog parlay there. Yeah, I think uh, you you can. I, I honestly think Charles Rosa loses, but I mentioned the bet that I have on him. Um, you know, submission or lose a decision. So, anyway, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here because I think the UFC is also trying to figure out what to do with them because neither one have really lived up to a ton of potential, but they could kind of make something happy. So curious to see what happens. I have no betting action on this. I do like the less more on monkey night fights. We on picks.com slash M K F to grab your free $100 deposit match.